Yeah, so I think for me, what was quite interesting um, about the book is that it left me with a lot of very, very intriguing questions. And the one that really stood up was the question of whether um, morality itself can be regulated. Yeah. So when you look at the position that the pastor played, I mean, the pastor in the general context mm. is sort of the, the, uh, the, the face of morality within mm. a community. He represents, well, you know, the religious doctrine yeah. and all of those things. So to then have a structure like that where we know, we think that we understand morality, and then for the state to step in and say, actually, we need to regulate this mm. by creating something called the Morality Act, mm. then calls into question their understanding of what human interactions yeah. ought to be mm. about. Mm. And then what happens from then on is that you then ask the question of why did they feel that it was necessary to create such a, such a legislation. And then they're saying that they were doing it to protect the Afrikaner women from themselves. From themselves. Mm. So then the question is, is the starting point that the Afrikaners themselves had sort of some human interaction with mm -hmm. the black people that they wanted to explore but then the state said no we need to regulate that it doesn't happen mm -hmm. so for them you sort of then try to figure out well in the absence of such a law what would they have done mm -hmm. and you can see that even once the law is put into place mm -hmm. it still doesn't break that human bond yeah. between two individuals yes. so when you look at the fact that some of the relationships were obviously very uh, different in nature because you know it was really a very oppressive setup mm -hmm. and yet you could find those that had a sense of affection mm -hmm. Um, that sort of uh, went beyond the fact that it was still something that was probably not supposed to be done but they still felt that actually we as human beings are connecting in spite of what the law is saying. So it always leaves me with the question of, you know, when you then take a step back and try to sort of see the entire architecture of how apartheid was created from the people that benefited from it and sort of try to un to see their own understanding of what was going on around them and I think it's something that we haven't explored ourselves and what you'll see that later on when he then sets the dogs on the woman that he used to, he used to love mm. he sort of had the swing from absolute affection to absolute mm. hatred mm. Yeah. Well. so what becomes a Rubicon moment at that mm. point in time is it because the sum of all his social our pressures tell him that you shouldn't have this sense mm. of affection towards this human being so therefore you need to gravitate towards that mm. and for him what do the dogs represent do they represent something that can actually enable him not to take accountability for the mm. fact that he actually is trying to punish a human being for mm. what she is and it's either you can have that through legislation mm. so i could always blame the law the law says that i must treat you this particular way or alternative i could say well the dogs have been conditioned to go and bite black people so i can always escape culpability mm. as a white man in this particular context yeah. so it always fascinated me in that i would say the rating would be a three out of five mm -hmm. um and i think at some point in time what zake tried to do with this book is that he tried to compress three sort of generations mm. into one narrative yeah. so there's obviously the story that precedes even poppy's own mm. uh, life and then there is the story itself mm -hmm. and then there's the story of what happens to the children afterwards mm -hmm. so i think what he was trying to do is trying to link it to essentially the three generational um issues that south africa has which is when apartheid is what was at its core and when liberation happened mm. and then what happens to the people mm. afterwards and the reality is that that stream hasn't been broken mm. because all of us sit around here we still talk about apartheid as if yes. it was something that happened yesterday yes. so there wasn't a fundamental breakaway to say now it's over we can do things differently mm. it is intergenerational by its very nature yeah. and the question is how do we then deal with it so i felt that he could have explored that a bit more but i think that he obviously had particular time pressure so i'd say it was a three out of five i personally would avoid reading black diamonds because the first question that i have is that what is a black diamond and i've always thought that that's a label itself that needs to be unpacked first before yeah. we can even delve into the literature of it i personally don't think that there's such a thing as black diamonds in the country mm. some few people have managed to get into the economic ladder but those are not diamonds themselves because diamonds for me it's something that is you know so infused within the soil Diamonds are a result of years and years of something being groomed underground and then saying at the end, oh, it becomes a diamond. Mm -hmm. Now to then take the experiences of a few people over 10 years mm -hmm. and say that it represents a, a, a bigger picture, mm -hmm. I don't buy into yeah. that. So I'm not a fan of black diamonds at all. Nice. Cool. Amari, wow. Kayabari, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Now you just read the title and already you're like, you're not even going to delve into what it. What is a black diamond? I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I read maybe the synopsis, if, if but and I was like, you know, because no. maybe if you would have delved into it and read it and seen all and the sex. Then, and then, <laughs> Because that's what you guys said. <laughs> Everybody mem remembers the sex from yeah. a black, black, yeah, black, black, black diamond. Yeah, because it was so explicit. Yeah. It was not all about the sex. You just <laughs> he dialed into the mm. sex so much. And it was mm. so explicit. You can't move away from that. Yeah. But, but I'm, I'm saying, Hori, I'm maybe. saying, Hori, yeah, yeah, if you would have read it and mm. then had an opinion based on what you've read, mm. maybe hey, you would have you would be telling a different story. Because the guy Nishi is not a black diamond, but his girlfriend is trying to make yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, such a thing.
Well, Are we doing two books at once now? I'm just asking. <laughs> you, you raised them. <laughs> no, because all of you t- kept talking about Black Diamonds. I'm like, yeah, that's one book of six that I'm trying to avoid. Yeah. Yeah, so. um, I think Ways of Dying was far more reflective of okay. how Zakes writes. Okay. As it were. We read and Madonna, to a certain extent, is okay. far more reflective of what he writes. Because he really tries to cascade the abstract into something that you can relate to a story. Yeah. Because storytelling, it comes naturally to mm-hmm. people. But trying to explain economic policy and all of the things, it doesn't come naturally. So how do you m- navigate that terrain? And I think that's what he does quite well, actually. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So is this a wrap, ladies? Yay! Yay! <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> ladies I can't and answer that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but She's honestly, so happy. Kaya, Five Kaya. Kaya. Remember that now. I am very happy <laughs> okay. that you got to join us today. And we got to share on your thoughts on the book yeah. and even the other book, mm. <laughs> Black Diamond. <laughs> but we're very happy and thank you so much for taking that time. No, thank you guys for inviting me to your club? space. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, not ours, but exclusive book, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> but thank you very much. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Kaya Zatole. And we're very thankful for his presence today. Yay! Yay!